Today I've got the information you're after. It's all about the taper, 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 taper. The first thing I want to look at is the Fed taper. People are looking around and they're starting to ask the question, when will the Fed taper? I've got information for you around that. The second thing, the ECB taper. The ECB has started to pull back on the amount of money that they are printing. The third thing is Canada's taper. Yes, Canada has been tapering as well. Then we also have Australia, New Zealand, and all of these other central banks that have started to increase interest rates or taper their balance sheet. There's so much going on today. You need to know it all. Let's go. So I'm assuming that you've seen yesterday's video. If not, I will link to it at the end of this one. But long story short, Fed officials prepare for November reduction in bond buying. This would be the case of, you know, approximately $10 billion reduction on the treasuries, $5 billion reduction on the mortgage-backed securities. They would keep that process in line until the middle of next year in which they would be buying nothing at this point. That remains to be seen if they'll do that and at that pace, but that is the intention here. We will find out at the FOMC meeting in this month, right now in September, so we'll see what happens. There are some, uh, you know, part of the Fed officials, some of them have come out, and now I believe the count is up to seven of them have come out and said, yeah, taper looks like it's going to happen. We're just waiting for this data, that data, but it's all ultimately at the FOMC meeting where we intend on finding out about it. Here is the Fed President Loretta Mester. I don't think the August employment report has changed my view. I'd be very comfortable. And then, by the way, John Williams says, I'd be very comfortable with starting this year and winding down the purchases over the first half of next year. Okay, so these two Fed presidents are saying that. You look further into what Williams has said, it's ultimately the same information you've heard many times before. Quote, assume the economy continues to improve as I anticipate, it could be appropriate to start reducing the pace of asset purchases this year. You know, well, we're going to worry about this and that, but that's what it looks like. So that's now seven people at the Fed are talking about tapering this year, and we'll get that information as it comes out. Many people said, no, it's impossible. No, they can't do it. I want to talk about that further in a few minutes. So stick with me because I think this is important. I think people need to understand why the Fed would want to taper. Okay. Look at this. Investor demand for treasury auctions blunts taper tantrum fears. So the fact here is that, hey, if the Fed's not buying it, who will? Primary dealers get dwindling share of note and bond sales. Elevated short positions suggest that some are buying to cover. Who knows what's going on? All I know is that if they're coming in and buying what they are, the Federal Reserve doesn't need to worry. Investors don't need to worry. Hey, it's all happening right now. This is the smaller portions. A share of US Treasury auctions awarded to primary dealers has shrunk, and this has been going down since the financial crisis. Okay, so you can look at that if you're interested, but just showing you what's been happening as a relation to you know, the Federal Reserve being the most active, most prominent of, uh, you know, the buyer, the buyer of last resort for these different products, whether it's, you know, the treasuries, whether it's mortgage-backed securities, they said they were going to go deep into the markets for, you know, the, the corporate bonds and so on, but it was mostly symbolic. Now, take a look at this. So this gentleman right here is the former Reserve Bank uh, Governor of India. The Fed now risks too slow of a taper after too fast in 2013. So not many people would say that, right? Well, the Fed thinks that it has time to slow walk the tightening process, especially given the longer term disinflationary forces like aging, automation, and globalization. But he's saying that there's one big difference now, which is the enormous amount of fiscal spending. Really key. My worry is that if they don't fully account for these new forces, they may be behind the curve, and that may, as everyone says, necessitate stronger tightening down the line. Absolutely true. Because you remember, so they're going to tighten this, as they say, they're going to slow the balance sheet purchases down. And remember, the balance sheet is still increasing. It's not that they're not printing any more money and reducing the balance sheet. That's not that's not being talked about at all all. This is the amount of money they're printing. So instead of $120 billion a month, the expectation is that they'd be printing, let's say, $105 billion a month. 
then we will have to see what happens after that. So you get the 105 billion, they start bringing it down. So the balance sheet is gonna be, let's say at you know $9 trillion before this is all said and done. So there's a lot of money that's been printed. The problem here is that brings us into the middle of next year. What is inflation gonna look like at that time? Who knows? Right now it's hot and heavy. Next year it could be crazy. It could be out of control. So then they will have to bring up interest rates. So they, they said, the, the taper first, then the interest rates later. How long is it going to take? What's going to happen in between? We'll see. Okay. So they get into more details, you know, if you're interested, but I want to summarize this right now in the Money GPS Insights. The Fed may join the rest of the world and begin tapering. Remember, I'll show you in a second, but if you see my other videos, you'll know that the whole world right now, for the most part, has been in some form of tightening or about to. Investors right now actually believe that the Federal Reserve can't stop the party and they won't stop the party, but that remains to be seen. Inflation is actively a problem for the Fed right now. And of course, there's only one solution to this. If inflation gets too high, they have to use interest rates. So they want to slow their money printing down, and then they're going to have some room to work with, hopefully by increasing those interest rates prior to the next downturn. Okay, my friends in Europe, check this out. The lady isn't Tapering, says Lagarde, as the ECB slows asset purchases. According to the ECB president, the move is a recalibration of monetary stimulus. I love, love, love the terms that these people are using today. It's, uh, it's fantastic. Okay, don't worry about it. Don't worry. <laughs> It's not printing money. That's what they said back in 2019 when they started doing the repo operations. Uh, this, this is not printing money, but their balance sheet was expanding at the fastest rate ever in history. It's not money printing though. It, I forget the term they used. It was a technical adjustment. I think that's the word that they used. Well, if you might want to technically adjust my bank account, I'd appreciate that. But anyway... The ECB has secured a taper without a tantrum. Careful maneuvering should allow the bank to recalibrate his next move while keeping both sides happy. All right, they're just going through here. And there were a couple of things that I wanted to point out. Yes, they want to get that illustrious 2% inflation target, which they never, ever seem to be able to hit. But here they go talking about it again. Now, right in here, they're just showing you the bank then confounded skeptics by giving patience and persistence a hard definition. It will not raise rates until inflation is expected to hit or exceed the target in at most 18 months and then stay there for a while. Okay, so don't expect interest rates to rise from the ECB side, just like they said with the Federal Reserve, just like this everywhere. You see the same, same thing, okay? That same message, don't worry, rates will stay low. But what happens with inflation that, you know, you, you measure real inflation and you see something very different. Europe, different story than the US, no doubt, but prices are rising all around the world, okay? All right, looking at this. What matters is not the label, but the justification. A moderate slowdown was consistent. The ECB said that maintaining a favorable financial conditions. That's what they want. And that means essentially easy monetary policy. And you'll see what happens. But the ECB has in short secured a taper without the tantrum. Because remember back in 2013, the Federal Reserve started to, you know, try to do this and the markets did not like it at all but don't worry because they came in globally global level in 2015 started pumping it up i believe the bank of england started doing this and uh, bank of japan obviously consistently doing that and, and and pushed the global balance sheets up higher and higher and higher okay so you can get a lot out of this article right here out of the Financial Times. I wanted to show you on a global scale, like what's happening? Because many people are only focused on the Fed. And obviously the Fed is the most important central bank that we should be touching on. But this right here, globalrates.com, it'll give you some insight as to what's happening. Now pay attention to the date. So I'm going to show you this right here. This right here is your date. And the last time interest rates changed, what happened? Okay, so... Some of these, they haven't changed since 2016, 
the Bank of Japan, but many of these are 2021. And if you look at these cases, Bank of Korea, 2021, Brazil, going down here, uh, Czech Republic, Hungary, Mexico, got that, Mexico, Russia, and Turkey. So in each of these cases, here's just one screen, um, you're seeing every single one of those being an increase. So if the rates have changed in 2021, they have increased. In fact, there have been 24 by my count, which I'm sure it's higher by now, 24 times this year alone, interest rates have increased on a global scale. 24 times. Many people are thinking, well, the rates are at zero. Well, the Fed's rate's at zero. But globally, they started to increase. And as you see rates increase, that makes those countries a little bit more attractive in the financial world. So it's a balancing act. We expect the Bank of Canada to wrap up net QE purchases over the coming meetings, but slow plate tightening compared to prior cycles. We see the initial liftoff in the first quarter of 2023. So going from zero or, or whatever the interest rates are, I think it's 0.25 in the first quarter of 2023. So not for a while, okay? So that's what they're saying for the Bank of Canada. They have tapered as well. But again, interest rates to stay zero or near it for a very long period of time. New Zealand bond market could face an October RBNZ surprise. Traders price in a 25 basis point rise in each of the next two meetings. So we'll see. I'll bring that information to you. I know I have subscribers in New Zealand, as well as, by the way, Australia. I covered that just recently. If you haven't seen that, I uh, covered that. The fact that they are also doing the same thing. They're all in the, you know, either increasing interest rates, they're, they're tapering. This is all happening. It's all happening right now before our very eyes. So the, the Fed is behind. Now, I had a couple of points that I really wanted to touch on here. I covered it in the Money GPS Live, and I wrote these down, and I just want to touch on these. Why? Why, why, why would the Federal Reserve do what they are doing? Why? If they're going to taper, why? Why would they do this? Why would they make the markets come down? And of course, there's a very good reason for that. Because if you look at the way the Federal Reserve was set up initially, you would understand who they work for. Okay, this is very important because the Federal Reserve and their level of control over the markets enables them to create a boom and bust cycle. When there is a bust, you have the richest of the rich people swooping in and buying assets for pennies on the dollar. They do not make most of their wealth when the markets rise. They make it when it falls. I know it's a little bit counterintuitive, but this is the case. And you see in the example of Greece, how they sold off islands. They sold off the airports. They were selling off all these different assets. And what happened? People with lots of wealth, they came in and bought things for cheap, 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 cheap. And all their infrastructure starts to disappear. And then of course, you, you, you know, you, you just go through the, you know, the whole, the whole thing and, and you see how this happens in many cases. I have it right here. Buffett buying Bank of America at dirt cheap prices, getting sweetheart deals. He bought Geico. He didn't buy Geico when there was a dip of 5% or 10% or 20% or like it was in 2020 where the market comes down by 20 or 30%. No, he bought Geico at 96 or 98% off. That's the sales that these people are looking for and they know what's going to happen. They're, they're assured, like nope, everybody's kind of freaking out at these times. But these people are, because they're on the inside, they're assured, don't worry, that company, we're going to make sure it's all, all okay. And this is the kind of thing that, you know, the retail investor isn't aware of and doesn't have the inside scoop, obviously, but there's a very different scenario and the Federal Reserve is controlling that all. They make it go up, they make it go down, and they decide this. It is not to sustain the markets in a perpetually high plateau forever. If you study the history, you will see that for yourself. And one last thing before I leave today, Beijing to break up 
and Alipay and forced the creation of a separate loans app. They're trying to break this apart and the tech stocks in China didn't like it. Okay, this is happening over and over and over again. They are way off their highs right now. So watch out where your money is because investing in good companies over the long term is not necessarily always a strategy we have to be careful all right are you an insider well that's basically my way of getting to you directly five days a week i email you the video the day we get around the censorship and the blockades and it's so simple it's free check it out here at themoneygps.com have you given your like yet if not why what's going on there's no shortage hit that like button i appreciate it appreciate the support if you haven't seen this video yet, you definitely want to check it out. Click it and I'll see you there.